I do regular quality assurance imaging with our x-ray equipment here for Adam Rooley. And today we're going to do some imaging of the x-ray positioning doll. So first of all, I'm going to do a series of five images. And the purpose of this is to make sure that it's anatomically correct, the joints are articulated properly, and there are no artifacts or other significant manufacturing issues that would need correction prior to selling. So the x-ray positioning doll, very, very useful, uh, allows us to, as you say, put patients into position for, for conventional x-rays um, the, with a good flexion of the joints and good range of movements. Very well made, high standard, and of course the arms as well, but these can be held in position. And the doll doesn't have to be always done on the table. Some x-ray examinations are done sitting in a chair, and the doll could be put into that position and supported uh, as we would do, say we're doing someone's hand x-ray, they would sit by the side of the table. But the issue of course with patients is that uh, we're three dimensional, so when we take images we have to take them in two dimensions. So as before we were taking images from the front, we can also do with the patient lying on their side. For example, we might do a spinal x-ray here, or we can also use this position to do images of the knee uh, in that position as would be done with a real patient. So the doll is very, very versatile and useful for that. The hands can quite easily support themselves up there. And this is very lifelike and is very good for, for practice purposes to teach good technique. So the images that I take will be of a skull, the head here, we will do the chest, we will do the pelvis, we will do the knees and we will do the feet. The system we're using here is what we call computed radiography. There's no films anymore, it's all done digitally. So I have a plate which I will position under the head and position the head in accordance with radiographic practice. This is called an AP view, that stands for anteroposterior, but effectively it's a view from the front. So you're looking at somebody face on. I make sure that I include all of the head and the jaw and we'll get the upper part of the cervical spine on as well. What I'm doing here is making sure that the x-ray beam which comes out of the x-ray tube is lined up correctly by means of lasers here and centering crosshairs which allow me to make sure that I know where the actual centre of the area of interest is. It's like a sight in effect. And then, because radiation is good for us, I have to make sure that I only expose the area of interest. And that is why I'm now adjusting the field of view to just to accommodate the head. And we'll do a chest. Again, a view from the front. This time, of course, I'm going to use a larger plate because the chest is bigger than the head. And of course I'm going to put it in a landscape position rather than portrait because I want to get the full width and also include the, the upper arms here. So we do get the upper arms but we don't need to worry as I said earlier about the elbow and the wrists. So again, as I would with a patient, except this patient doesn't talk to me so it makes life a lot easier sometimes. But uh, we're going to make sure we get the patient symmetrical, that the area of interest is included, that they're straight. And this time, make some adjustments to the distance that I use to reduce magnification. I won't go into this, the physics of that, but I like to keep the magnification in the images to a minimum. And that's a general principle of radiography. So I'm not doing anything special here because it's a phantom. This is exactly what we would do with a real patient. Right, now we're going to do the pelvis. So, but of course, very careful to make sure that I get overlap with the lower part of the chest. So we're going to do this portrait to include the abdomen and the hip joints. So same procedure again, making sure the patient is straight, not rotated. We don't want it where one hip is higher than the other. That would cause us to have an unsymmetrical image and a hard to gauge quality. So I'm making sure we've got the overlap sufficient by palpating, pressing various bony landmarks. 
which is what we have to use in radiography to, to find various parts, and then to make sure that the hips look flat, and again, to use the x-ray tube to centre appropriately to include the required area of interest. Um, for completeness, uh, the abdomen that we've taken here with the pelvis, again on the doll you can actually see kidneys that have been manufactured to fit in there. We have the outside skin of the doll again and again here you can see how it's been manufactured to their standards with the fixations to hold the hip joints uh, in place. Nice straight spine, as, you, as you'd expect, and a nice symmetrical appearance. But of course the other thing is to make sure I've got overlap correct, because as, as you know, I've done a, a chest x-ray beforehand. So to prove that I've got the overlap, here is the lower part of the rib cage. I'll just also show there and there. And there's the kidney, there. And if I now go to the chest, which shows here at the bottom, we have the top of the kidneys. So I've got overlap on and the bottom of the rib cage. We also have lungs there is a lung margin and a lung margin there. To be a bit more precise, I will trace it down there, the margin with the cursor. And in the middle is a heart, which sits as in the middle of the chest there. But it shows the, the true density that you'd expect because the heart is very muscular and would show up as dense as bone on a chest x-ray because not much radiation has passed through it. Again we have the shoulder joints, the clavicles, there's the bottom of the neck, so we've shown all of the axial skeleton which is the real major purpose of this exercise. We're not worried about the limbs here, I've examined them uh, physically um, and we've done the whole, the whole part. Right and now we're off to do the knees not just the knee joints, but of course we're going to include as much of the lower femur and as much of the upper tibia and fibula as we can, because not just looking at the joint space, but we want to make sure the alignment of the bones are okay. So again, we will get overlap to make sure that the upper femur that was included on the previous view links on with what we're taking here. So same procedure. Well, I've got to find where the knee joints are, so again I'm palpating, that's where I and feel the joint, so that goes in the middle of the area of interest. And uh, just to make sure that the legs look in a similar position. So they're, by palpation, they should, are supposed to be symmetrical. But of course the image will prove whether that's the case or not, and that again highlights why we do this, to make sure that internally the structures are as they should be to match true anatomical accuracy. Um, so, for example, these knees checking for quality, what I'm making sure is that we can see the joint space here, which is there and there. Clearly you can see the manufacturing here, there's the, uh, what would be the, jo the joint capsule ligaments in process there uh, that obviously hold the knees, the knee together. There's also a, a cartilage space there that's, that's put in there to make it as lifelike as possible. And you can see on the outside the uh, rubber skin of the, of the phantom, the doll, and here we have the bone, the tibia, the femur, and the fibula, uh, with obviously the uh, d darker areas here is where there's no bone, where the radiation has gone through, and when it's whiter, that's where the bone is thicker. So we're getting effectively an image, it's like a shadow image of the x-ray beam passing through it. And this is very good here, we've got, they look symmetrical, they look equal, for example, the gap here between the tibia and the fibula is the same each side. Um, but all dolls are different, they are individual and some it may vary a little bit, but this is part of the reason why we do this quality assurance process, to make sure that they meet uh, minimum standards before they're sent out to the customers. Again, annotated right and left, just so that these images which are sent with the dolls, the purchaser can then see for themselves that they've got a, an annotated record of the uh, examination and the product that they've purchased. So the penultimate image is going through the processor. We're now going to do the last image. This one's a little bit more of a challenge. I want to get the feet from sort of looking from the top. So I don't want to put the x-ray tube here. I haven't got the, the bodies in the way. So I'm going to flex the legs and put some pillows there so that 
we have them in this sort of position and I can then take an image from this direction. So two pillows to go under the knees. This is what we have to use in radiography, positioning aids to help maintain a position. Even patient, real patients can't necessarily hold that position. I know this doll can't because it's, it's an inanimate object, but the, the principles, as I say, are exactly the same as we do with real people, where necessary. I'm getting some positioning aids. We have lots of sandbags because they're very heavy, uh, like blocks uh, and, and soft foam pads to support parts of the body, or in this case, the film because I'm going to put the cassette there and support this in position so that it doesn't move. So now we can see, and the, the feet are here now, I know you can't see, but in a symmetrical position. So we're looking at your feet as though you're looking from this direction and this time I can now move the x-ray tube and I'm going to come in from this angle. So I can tilt the tube highly manoeuvrable making sure the feet are final adjustments together and again adjusting the collimators to the required area like so, final check. So having taken all these images, skull, chest, pelvis, knees and feet, the process is complete. We've done the five areas it wanted to do. I will then print these off and they will go with the report of any observations as to the uh, issues about the quality, as I said before, in terms of manufacturing, joint spaces being correct, no artifacts and general alignment being fit for purpose. And that would conclude my required duties for this examination.